tonight with Josh McCormick. Welcome, Josh. Hey, Tiffany. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. So tonight we're going to talk to Josh. So Josh is my cousin, uh, but Josh is also the liberal candidate for Southwest Miramichi Bay de Vin. So yes. tonight Josh is just going to share a little bit of his story with us about some personal health issues that he's overcome and how he's keeping himself healthy now that he's going into an amazing campaign and uh, kind of change of life for him at the moment. Yeah, for sure. They, I, they told me at the start a couple of days ago that you have to remember to eat and drink and I thought they were kidding, but now that I'm three days in, they definitely were, uh, they were honest. I've had three slices of toast today, so I'm just trying to keep her all straight, but it's fun. It's fun. Um, yeah, I guess for me, health-wise, uh, my world changed about two and a half years ago. Uh, I was crossing a street in Moncton, and I was unfortunately hit uh, hit by a vehicle as a pedestrian, and uh, it kind of jolted me into a reality of a new life and a new way of living, health-wise and, and, and daily as well. Uh, I referee a lot of hockey. I did at the time, and, and that really kind of derailed that career and made me uh, focus on some other things. Uh, I, because of the accident, I had a severe concussion, uh, bumps and bruises all over, as you can imagine. And I actually tore three of the four ligaments in my right knee. Uh, when I started out, uh, I, the surgeon told me <clears throat> that I kind of had two options. Uh, I could either rehab my butt off and hope for the best or I could go into two surgeries one then another I chose the rehab route uh, I went to uh, River Rehab down in Miramichi around the square and worked with uh, Courtney Flanagan and her team and I tell you they were second to none they really were uh, they push you and they teach you about rehabilitation and also the mental the mental side of things I didn't realize how mentally tough physical rehab was and just get getting back on your feet and things like that. I ended up spending a year and a half in rehab. Uh, I went down to potential of one surgery and then eventually I got down to where I didn't need any surgeries. I had rehabbed my knee well enough that the, the muscles around the knee kind of are holding on for dear life and just keeping, uh, keeping everything intact. But, uh, yeah, it was an eye opener for me, uh, just on both sides, physically and and how the healthcare system helps you, and also mentally how important it is to have uh, a strong team around you and, and to keep your mental your mental strength strength at full capacity. So, yeah, that was kind of that's kind of where I went with it. Wow, Josh, I just remember at the time kind of seeing pictures of you and your leg up, you know, and. And it's like, yeah, so Josh was hit by a car. And, but what was that <laughs> moment like for you? Because, you know, I work in the Emerge, so I see lots of people. And, and often I never get to hear kind of the stories after. But, you yeah, know, that it, it, it was a lot of emotion. Um, so when I got hit, I got knocked out. Um, so I woke up in the hospital. I kind of, it was like a bad dream. I kind of knew what was going on, but I didn't uh, when I woke up. Obviously, I was in the emergency room then, and they didn't know anything about my knee. The doctor said, you've been hit by a vehicle. Uh, you have some internal bruising of the stomach liner and stuff we're going to monitor. And then a, a nurse had come over to switch out my bedding, and the gentleman rolled me to one side, and then when he rolled me to the other side, my knee just went snap, and it snapped out of place. And I'm telling you, I hope no one listening goes through it because that was the worst pain I have ever had in my whole life. So then they were like, okay, I guess maybe something's wrong with your knee too. So then uh, I went into a high fever. Uh, they put some, I remember them putting something in my IV because I thought I was going to throw up and whatnot. And, and next thing I woke up on the fifth floor of the Moncton hospital and uh, they, then they walked me through the kind of diagnosis of my knee and and what the orthopedic surgeon thought at the time and yeah it's uh when you wake up and you don't really know what's going on and you've kind of went through a scenario where some people don't make it out alive out of those scenarios that plays with your mind and I was very emotional 
And uh, one minute I would cry, one minute I would laugh, one minute I'd be happy, sad, mad. It, it, was, a, it was really a mixed bag of emotions would be the, my initial impact of sitting in the ER and, and things like that. So. But such a change for you too, Josh, you know, for someone that was so active, you know, very active in hockey and refereeing and, and physical activities. And to take that change, you know, for your body to go from being busy to being stuck in a bed. Like, mm -hmm. how did you overcome that? Like, what, what got you through things day by day? Just kind of, how did you know that there would be a brighter day that you would walk again and have your abilities back? Um, honestly, I think it was the people around me and the support, you know, that's the good side of social media is, you, you know, you can put some things out like that and the immense support that you get back. It's just amazing. And, and it feels like people are with you along your journey and, and cheering you on and pushing you to do bigger and better things and, and, and to, to help yourself. And I think that's kind of was the a number one factor. And obviously, along with that is my family. I mean, I couldn't have done any of it without my mother and my father and, you know, my aunts and uncles and cousins and either it's pushing me in a wheelchair or or bending my leg, you know, in the rehab process, or or driving me to physio or to doctor's appointments. It's just it would have been impossible to do it without a good base of friends and family, and and I'll be thankful for them, you know, for a long time for that. It's I remember being in the hospital and uh, and I had you know aunts and uncles. I have a we have a big family as you know, and sometimes you you lose connections quite easily just in the realm of life. But the second I got hurt, I think the word went out and, and I just had aunts and uncles driving two to three hours to come down and see me. And, and, you know, it's, it's, there's just some things that you just never forget. It's actually making me a little uh, teary eyed right now, just thinking about it. But when you, when you put love in your heart and, and you open it up to the world, it's uh, it's a good thing. A good thing and you know it's just so important to have family and you know we're we're so lucky in that way to live in the town that we do and and for us you know to have cousins and and people all over you know i think that's one of the greatest things living in the maritimes is about and because you know you've traveled and i've traveled and we worked abroad and and uh but to know that family's around you you know and when we look yes. at you know when we look at health and longevity and people living happy lives it's when you can have those family connections and sounds like that's a pretty important thing. No, it is for sure. And I, I just, I find I'm a big team guy. And, and I think with a family or a community or a health organization or an education system, if everyone's working as a team to accomplish the same goals, things are going to go a lot easier. And, and that's kind of my vision for, for the province in the whole is we have to put a, put aside our differences, work through our differences and just push together to make tough decisions for, for this province, so. And it looks like it's that kind of resiliency too, you know, that you talk about teamwork and, and kind of, you know, sports and all those sorts of things. Um, how do you think that's kind of helped you as well? Like, I guess during that period of your recovery, both physically, but again, you had your, your family for support, but knowing that you had that greater support of um, that team of, you know, the hockey and, and all those referees and, you know, yeah. you're not across the province, you know, for your. Referees. Yeah. Well, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, I'm not going to let you down. So you don't let me down motto, you know, like, like they're going to cheer me on and push me to be the best I can be. So I'm not going to let them down. I'm going to work my butt every day so I can get back and see those guys and, or, you know, see those people that are around the game or, or what, what have you. It's, uh, like I said, I've, growing up in sports my whole life and that to me that's what a team is it's it's overcoming those hurdles together and pushing each other for bigger and better things and and I think along the recovery process if you had to do it totally by yourself that it's a tough I don't know how anyone could do could do it, excuse me I'm sure people have but it's it's got to be a tough go so I was very fortunate to have that team atmosphere around myself and and just almost like little cheerleaders like on your shoulder every time where you're like, ah, I don't really want to do that. But then you got, you know, 
your aunt in your ear or your uncle in your ear or your friend in your ear or something like that and that are just pushing you to that next level so i really think that's what it what it boils down to it's when you can have people that are lifting you up you know like i see people too when they're coming in and, and they're sick and they can have those that just encourage them you know that they they know they want to do a little bit better and and i do think of that too you know just in terms of politics sometimes yeah. you know that how do we kind of build each other up instead of tearing each other down you know yeah like if we actually kind of work together for common goals you know could that be better in the long run for all of us oh i t totally 100 percent agree I, I hate that negative campaigning and i said from day one that that's not something that i'm about or nor will i do i think i think in today's day we do wedge politics a lot you know how am i going to put a wedge between that person and their voters well i'll say something negative and then i'll try and wedge myself in there and it's just it's no good we just end up tearing each other apart and and just belittling ourselves to simple conversations where humanity in this province deserves tough conversations you know we i i've already had it some some people that don't agree with the party i'm running with or whatever it's you know i, I embrace those conversations because i want to learn like let's learn from each other and see how we can build on each other's views to come to a and move things forward. Yeah, and it's how we stay kind of resilient and mentally strong during those times. I remember hearing a quote once, they talked about Mother Teresa, and she said she would never go to an anti-war uh, rally, but she would go to, uh, you know, a peace rally. You know, oh, and it's, okay. it's kind of how we reframe things, you know, yes. and I think we can reframe that whether it's our own personal health or the health of our province. It's how we take a proactive role and let's look at how we can reinforce the good things that are happening. Um, you know, we have to evaluate the bad, but really reinforce those those positive things that, that are already there. No, for sure. Yeah, that's that's a great quote, quote and that's a great way to look at it. It's, uh, you know, I have a little catchphrase that they taught me at physio and it's positivity wins a day and it and it's so true is you can look through the lens and see as much negative as you want but if you can switch it around and just see a little bit of positivity I, I, it really gets you going for the day and it and it, it builds on itself i mean positivity is it's like a snowball it, it, you keep it moving you keep it moving and and eventually it's moving itself so that's uh, that's what I think is we just need a little bit more positivity and a little bit more openness to tough conversations. My dog yeah. is <laughs> my dog is driving me nuts. She wants me to pet her. That's what, why the camera's shaking there. She's very needy this time of night. Well, again, that's another you know strong reinforcer for health, right? You know, I'm always <laughs> looking for these things. You know, when they looked at, I was just talking about the blue zones a couple of weeks ago, and when you look at kind of longevity and people that are living to be over 100 they had companions and many of them had physical companions but sometimes it was an animal companion as well yeah. So. yeah no no exactly whatever works right i mean <laughs> she's she's helped me a lot the, this past couple of days when you come home and you see her there and she's always so excited to see you you're like oh just kind of the stress of the day can just easily slide off the shoulders when you have when you have someone there just ready to play and have fun and and a big smile on their face and a big wet nose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so over the next upcoming while, you know, Josh, because again, you've you've been through probably one of the worst incidents of your life in terms of your health. Um, but many people have said, you know, running a campaign, the stress level, you know, just rises and rises and rises on a daily basis. So what are the some of the things that you do now to try to just keep yourself you know, level-headed and staying in the game, if we can use your hockey terminology. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's a good one. I I don't try and look too far ahead or too far back. Uh, try to stay in the moment a little a little more. Uh, as, as soon as, for me, I can get into an overthinking mode. And when I overthink, well, then it's just your mind's always racing. And I really just try to, to run my campaign with my team and I don't try to look at competition or anything like that it's it's straight ahead let's keep moving straight ahead and and it's uh you know put my message out there and and, and my team's message and just what we believe in and hope that 
you know, enough people like it so that I can keep talking about it is essentially the goal. It's, uh, it's really, I'm trying to build, you know, I'm not trying to build a 12 point plan for this and a five point plan for that. And it's drown people in statistics and whatnot. I'm trying to build a culture and, and a journey that let's work our butt off for each other and let's work our butt off for the communities that we live in so we can all prosper as a province. And I think the quicker that we come under one umbrella working together, it doesn't matter party lines or, or, or you know, whatever color flag you're, you're waving, that shouldn't matter. It's take your values, stick to them and, and have tough conversations. Well, it sounds wonderful. And I think you're, um, the, one of your mottos, you've got like a four pillars. I know one of them was positivity, you know, yeah. and hard, hard working. Um, those sound like pretty good values that are going to get you a long way during this next, uh, next month. Yeah, it's kind of, I, I've just adapted them from my, from my life, you know, hope, honesty, hard work and positivity. And, and for me, if I, if I keep checking in with those every day, every day, hope for the next day, hope for the next support and, you know, hard work from the time I get up in the morning till I go to bed, I'm always working towards the goal of making this community better and, and just, having positivity we've already touched on and and it's just moving forward and i think sometimes when you have those little little one words or two words it, it really just grounds you and it, it brings you back and if your mind's racing a little bit you can think okay that doesn't really fall in line here let's just push that aside and, and keep chugging along so i love it josh and kind of knowing your background you know we come from um basically lumberjacks that have worked hard <laughs> yeah. all of all of their lives and it sounds like really you have that enthusiasm and you have that endurance you've shown that you've got some skills that make you want to make some positive changes um, both in your own health and also in the health of our community so um thanks so much i'm so happy to call you my cousin yeah and <laughs> thank you you too <laughs> yeah no it's a it's a very it's a lot of pride for sure yeah well, thanks again, and I hope uh, Miramichi enjoys the message as we spread wellness throughout our community. Thanks, Josh. Awesome.